the digitalization of the economy is not an end in itself. Digitalization and AI are mean. We will not support AI projects for the sake of AI. We will not support digitalization for the sake of digitalization. Technology, including AI, is neutral. What matters is the objective that you assign to it. So what are the objectives for the government of the Brussels capital region? For the government, the objective is really to put digitalization at the service of the transition, the social and, and uh, environmental transition of the economy. More specifically, the government wants to focus its uh, research and innovation policy instruments towards projects with a high performing, high transforming potential to really answer in a sustainable way the climate, social and democratic urgencies we're facing. Those projects that contribute to the well-being of the Brussels inhabitants. Those projects that let them experiment and develop environmentally and socially sustainable economic models. Those projects that contribute to the resilience of the region and of the creation of an innovative, decarbonized and circular economy. All those projects will be supported by the Brussels region. The ambition of this uh, government is very high to make Brussels a resilient region. We know we can count on the creativity, astuteness and can-do attitude of the digital community in Brussels. So let's make it happen. Thank you. It's very important for the government of Brussels uh, capital and artificial intelligence is key to successfully engage in this evolution and its focused technology of next tech or digital entrepreneurship roadmap. So this digital transition brings challenges and in this regard Brussels comes with very solid resources. Indeed, the capital of Europe has everything a tech company needs. An open economy, business incentives and services, the most attractive place for foreign investors, the gateway to Europe, a strong infrastructure and a talent pool of multilingual, highly skilled professionals in all sectors. It is therefore not surprising to count more than 1,500 international companies headquarters that are now established in Brussels. Belgium has essential assets regarding digital transformation and especially artificial intelligence. We are strong in our world-class AI researchers, some of whom were at the cradle of artificial intelligence. Today, Belgium ranks ninth in the Digital Economy and Society Index within the EU. With a society that largely embraces AI as a novel and promising technology rather than a threat. Her Brussels and its cluster, Software Brussels, provide tailor-made support and advice to any entrepreneurs and companies involved in AI. It creates opportunities to foster local and international collaborations in which our members can simultaneously find specific answers to their business needs techno and technological challenges. Digitizer, which has been chosen to host our events tonight, is symbolic of this dynamism. We are so delighted to welcome you in this fantastic hub, located in the heart of, the, of Brussels, where communities gather to boost their digital skills and raise awareness on AI and data literacy. Software Brussels is a community, to put it simply, to gather Brussels entrepreneurs, academics, and public and private institutions together, all active in digital technologies in Brussels so following a triple helix model. The cluster is managed by a team hosted at Hub Brussels that proposes a series of added value services to around 150 members. It evaluates. Uh, those services, as Isabel said, are uh, on the first part, co individual coaching for the companies in different fields, internationalization, strategic positioning, financing, legal, subsidies, and so on. And also a more collective part uh, of services, uh, including uh, to help to internationalize, uh, notably through participation to international fairs, uh, but also to give 
visibility to the members of the cluster through uh, different channels uh, and also, of course, organizing networking events such uh, tonight and also uh, technical or, or thematic workshops. Now, other things, but let's give you the picture. The gap is growing a lot between those two AIs, and more than that, the second AI, the one which is highly successful this last five, six years, what I usually call the subconscious AI, is really invading the field of the first AI. Distinction between the two AI. This is kind of success of you know, AI this last uh, five, six years. You might recognize all those successes. The final AI who succeeded to defeat the best Go players in the world was this subconscious AI. It learned by itself what were the best moves. That was totally impossible 30 years ago because we didn't have the power of the machine in order to play statistically all those random games. But that created also a big mess. We won the Go, the machine won the Go, but won the Go in a way that is completely understandable, so completely meaningless for even the best Go player in the world. So people have questioned Lee Sedol when he was defeated. And Lee Sedol said, OK, I've been defeated by the machine. But more of, moreover, even worse, I didn't understand the way the machine was playing. So the machine rediscovered way of playing Go that hasn't been even invented, even found, even discovered by Lee Sedol himself and many players of Go. What happened with this deep learning is that you still, when we were doing your network, and there are people here that I know that are expert in image recognition, the feature extraction, the feature engineering was still done by human. We got the feeling that we need to help the machine, exactly like in the case of Go. We needed to help the machine to be able to perform because we needed to help it to find the right classification, the right classification. But since this last five, six years, we realized that we, the machine doesn't even need our help. They can find by themselves what are the good features to do the classification. What makes a cat a cat, what makes a dog a dog can be discovered by the machine itself. We don't even need to find the contour, find the contrast between the cat and the dog. The machine will discover it by itself. When you see a picture of a man playing a guitar and you say that in this picture there is a man playing a guitar, you know what is a man, you know what it is playing a guitar, you already heard a guitar. You, and the, this is a big difference with the machine. The machine can do exactly the same thing as you. The machine as you, can tell this is a man playing a guitar, but there's a huge difference. The machine has no clue of what is a man or what is hearing a guitar, what is playing a guitar. Keep that in mind. This is really important. There is a mystification of AI too. So, do you know who is he? Yeah, it's me. Great. It's his famous face up. I received this sent by my son. He sent me, you know, this is what you're going to become in uh, 20 years. I was kind of afraid, you know, but, you know, I'm not, I was not afraid that that was me. I'm afraid that that was little, really like my mom. It's really like my mom. It works, this, this, this incredible thing. I, I mean, this face up, which is only based on deep learning, has learned what it means to grow old. But I've learned it in a fully subconscious way, you know, by just using deep learning. I have just one problem. Where is the science? I've, I've written a Tribune in the Monde because I was a little bit upset by a book by Yann Lequin, which, by the way, is a friend of mine. So I've, I'm, 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 I'm certainly a great guy. He's one of the guys who received the Turing Prize for invented the deep learning. But they say, this is a revolution. And I say, well, where, where is the revolution? You know, I don't see any revolution in that. You know, your network is such an old idea. But I even see a regression in the science of AI. There was definitely a very interesting progression in the technology but we don't understand any longer. You know, we can make some, we, we, to some extent, we imitate the growing old, but there is no science. We, we, we've lost the science of what means growing old, or we've lost the science of linguistic translation. You know, I was surprised when Google say, we've made incredible progress in translation the, the, the day we fight all the linguists in our lab. This is pretty frightening, you know. Without the linguist, without the science of linguistic, they could achieve such an incredible and successful thing. So this is what happened a little bit over here. So keep in mind that all AI is not a love affair between big data and machine learning. And we need to understand them. They have to self-understand what they're doing. This is why classical AI has still a role to play. But we need to understand what kind of decision they take. And this is a key issue in AI today, you know, explainability. You may have heard about that, but it doesn't mean a lot of thing, you know. Uh, I, I guess it's very important, and Europe is pressing a lot, and I think they're right, to build a system that not only perform, but it's not enough. Even if they do 100%, suppose you have a self-driving car, and you have a statistics that they just kill one 
person while you keep hearing that, while the human drivers keep, you know, 100,000 of persons. But even so, statistically, you would defend the AI because it just killed one person, you know, Tesla killed one person while human drivers. But even so, we need to understand how this person has been killed because it is an AI system. We are much more demanding for AI, and we have to be. We need to be much more demanding for an AI system than for human drivers. Human drivers often try to explain why they behave in such a way, and even if there's not a full explanation of what they did, they still have a possibility to try to defend themselves to explain it. AI these days have not this possibility because the deep learning machine is, not, is completely unable of introspection. You can't explain why it threw the missile or why there was this car accident. And I think this is why I was written this article of the Monde that this was a kind of regression. And just to give you a last example, I think when Lee Seidel was defeated by Alpha Zero, that was a regression for Go. Even if the best player is not a, is not a machine, that was a re regression for Go because defeating Lee Seidel is something. But defeating Lee Seidel is Lee Seidel is impossible to understand why and how he's been defeated is another thing. You know, I believe that we will need time, perhaps, for the Go players to regain control and regain understanding of a, of a game they practice for century, if not millenary. You know. But right now, right now, in this moment for Go, we're living, we're going through a regression. And I think this is an important message also to take home. Thanks for your attention.